Hi guys and welcome to the kitchen. Oh, it gives me goosebumps every time I watch that video. I do like it. I don't know about you lot. I know that you that you were really liking it last week, but it still gives me a nice chill inside when I watch it. So welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen on this lovely Monday morning. I have Tony on camera. Hello guys. And we're going to have some fun today. We're going to make chocolate eclairs and we're going to fill them with our f f uh, f Oop, put your teeth back in for the weekend <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fill them with fresh cream that's been flavoured with our delicious icing sugars and I'm also going to fill some with creme patissiere which I'm going to show you how to make again because I noticed a few of you were wanting to know how to make it so we're going to do both fillings and a lovely chocolate eclair we will end up with I'm going to let Tony say a few hellos. Yeah, hello to all of you first and foremost, but a couple of you who have shouted out. Good morning, Debbie Hargreaves. Good morning, Sue Mary. Tina Pine, Alison Hodgson, Alma Evans, Ball Baker Paul, Kerry Sarson, Teresa Hunt, Divya Gardia, I think that's how you say your name, I'm so sorry. Halima, Jennifer Rold, um, Elizabeth Lennox, Lynn Steer, Sean Moss, Pat Broderick, Wayne Chambers more everyone, just everyone. Good morning, <laughs> everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. This is what we are aiming for. We're aiming for these. I've just made a half portion, so I have six shoe buns and don't worry they look a bit flat but it's because they've come out of the oven now and once you inject them or you fill them with the cream because they're so light and fluffy they're an absolute dream when you've done it so they're nice and oh they're nice and light though so i'll be cutting them and i'm also going to try the injection method um of piping the cream in. i've never done that before but this is a request of our camera person Tony. It's because I can just watch. <laughs> so <laughs> I will try it on one and if if it fails then I will go back to my usual method of cutting it but I'm sure it's going to be fine. So I'm going to put these out of the way because these are the ones I'm going to fill in a bit uh, as the other ones that we're making now will still be too warm to fill while you're live on air. So I've just made a quick six so we can fill those. And good morning Iris. Hello, Mum. <laughs> Very professional, isn't it? I am R. <laughs> right, so here, I don't know if Tony can get down to a lovely photograph of the chocolate eclairs. I can. Ta -da. Look at those. So they've got, I've just, you see how I've just, I've just cut the side, I've just uh, split them and then filled them with cream. Now some of the, I wanted to show you some with the creme patissiere but it wasn't quite ready. I have got a batch in the fridge waiting to do them on the ones that I've done that I've already baked. So look at these. Oh, and Suzanne it, Wall, Karen, they look delicious. Well it's topped. It's actually topped. I'll just move that bottle. I'll leave that there. It's actually topped. Um, this was off my really good friend, Doe, who was having a right good chat on Friday. And I was asking her about the, uh, what toppings, you know, like because I love doing the milk chocolate. I didn't want it to be cracking, though, and going everywhere. So she says, no, Karen, melt some milk chocolate or, or your dark chocolate, you, you know, your Calibo Callots, and then just put a little knob of butter in it and stir it round till the knob of butter has uh, melted. And so I'm still, it's set but it's not going to like crumble up and the chocolate fall off the, uh, the the shoe pastry. It's going to be very much like the ones you get in the shop. The, me the recipe I'm using, I've only, I'm only using half a recipe today, and the half recipe just make these six lovely biggish ones. Now, if you wanted to, you could make them smaller. I've done a couple... I've done a couple of, of small ones here if you just wanted to have an eclair bite. So if you see, um, see it's like half size. So you could make small, it's as big as you want to make them or as small as you want to make them. And even with this recipe, uh, you can make your little fresh rolls for Christmas if you want to make your gorgeous fresh rolls. Just do them as little blobs and then you can fill them with cream and you can dip them with chocolate or you can, uh, you can drizzle the chocolate all over the top. So you can even make your own profiteroles for Christmas because they are so easy to make. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to start with the shoe pastry. And then we can get those in the oven cooking away while I show you how to do the creme patissiere. And then we will flavour the double cream and then we'll do some piping. So let's move those out of the way there. <laughs> Perhaps uh, just having a brew could just eat one. <laughs> <laughs> if I could zap it through the camera, I would to you. 
So shoe pastry. Just bear with me a second. Let me just put just put my crumpet of Sierra out of the way. Where did I put my scales? Here they are. So because I'm, I'm going to do a half measure today, I will put the full recipe on the website. So it will make double of what I've made today. Or if you're making smaller ones and you want to only use a half recipe, just, just half your recipe that I put on the website. And you'll be able to get yourself probably about eight or nine of the smaller ones. Uh, six large ones. It depends on how you want to do it. You could even make them round if you wanted to, if you want round eclairs. But a, a traditional eclair is usually a nice long one. So we want 60 mils of milk, and that's going to go straight into the saucepan. Sorry, I've just read. What have you done? Sarah Jane Elden, remember to remove the laces from the shoes for the pastry. <sighs> it's so terrible. That is, that is a really bad Monday morning joke, that. I, love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> I'm glad Simon's in here because he'd have been coming back with another even worse joke. Yeah, I, d I don't have many jokes up my sleeve, but I like hearing them, yeah. so... <laughs> <laughs> right, 60 mils of milk has gone into there, and now I'm going to do 60 mils of water. I'm being very careful because I want to get it dead on. There we go. And I have 53, um, no, 57 grams, 57 grams of butter. And I've cut that into small chunks and that's going into the pan as well. Ooh, ooh. Careful. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So I'm putting that into the pan and I'm also going to put in a good heat tablespoon of and I'm going to use gorgeous salted caramel flavoured natural flavoured icing sugar so a good tablespoon is going into there and then that's going to go on the heat now until the butter has melted now it will just take a couple of minutes but we do stir all the time because we don't want anything to stick onto the bottom So just while that is actually just starting to heat up, what I will do is we need two egg yolks beaten. So I am just going to, I've got my empty dish here. So I've got the dirty, the uh, one with the butter in, I'm just going to put the egg whites into that. Now remember these egg whites, if you was making a full portion because you need the four egg yolks, whereas this is only half a portion, you actually could then make the uh, white sponge that I've shown you how to make this on the recipe, on the recipe website, white sponge. And you can just use your uh, egg whites in that, so you're not actually wasting them. Sarah Jane Alden's uh, backtracking slightly. She says, "Sorry, Karen, you need a good laugh in times like this." <laughs> you do, and I'm sorry, and that's all right. And you're all right because I'm on shoe pastry. I need the whole leg. So forget what I said. We want two full eggs, and we want to give them a beat up. Hey, that was good separation practice. I know well, that's separate. You see, that was just practicing for when I had to do it for the crumpet de air. So there we go, we've got two eggs beaten up there and they will be added once we have made our shoe batter before it goes into the um, mixing, uh, it goes into the mixer and we mix the egg, the beaten egg in slowly. This is just trying to start to melt, now I can just see it starting to melt. I'm just going to turn it up a, a tad. See I've got Miller pan there is waiting for the creme patissiere. I hope you all had a really nice weekend. Um, I loved all the uh, poppy cakes that I saw and all your poppy cupcakes that I saw 
on Facebook. You did an amazing job, and that was from Carol doing the tutorial on Thursday. You did an absolutely fabulous job when I saw them, and I know a lot of people were really happy to receive them. They've been taken to uh, old folks' homes, they've been given to veterans, and I think a couple of you were doing also doorstep, doorstep drop-offs for people. So very kind of you all. Go, that's starting to melt down now. So once this is melted, we just want to um, give it a couple of minutes without it sticking. We just keep stirring it. We want to give it a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn the heat down and then a couple of minutes on simmering, still stirring, and then that's when we'll add the flour. Now the oven is on preheat and I've got it on 160 degrees. See, that's all starting to melt really good now. Come together. Here we are, there we go. So I'm just going to turn this down, and I'm just going to stir this round just for a minute or two, just so everything is cooking nicely in there. Sarah's on it today. Is she making more jokes? <laughs> Had a jacket potato last night. Took me ages to remove the buttons. And I can't say you need to get out more because we're not allowed to, are we? <laughs> I love oh. oh dear. Here we go. So that's it. I don't want to make it boil, so I have turned the uh, I've turned the cooker right down. But being electric, it does take a while for it to cool down. Oh, Denise, we are making eclairs today with a creme patissiere as well. Yes, yeah, so, so I'm going to make a crumpet this year in a bit, but uh, we're going to have half eclairs that are filled with fresh cream flavour with our icing sugars, and half of the eclairs are going to be filled with a crumpet this year, and they're going to be topped with a gorgeous milk chocolate calibre topping that has a little bit of butter going through it, so that it's a nice smooth mixture going on top of your eclairs. Yum. I mean, I've had nothing to eat today, so I'm actually looking forward to one of these probably for dinner. <laughs> really healthy lunch, but you know, hey. <laughs> and I'm sure Antonia will be wanting to try one. Ah, uh, I can't wait for you. <laughs> I, was, I was so tempted to pinch one earlier, and I was like, no, be good, don't do it, we need them for the live. <laughs> you would have spoiled my display. I know, I would have done, and it would have been so worth it, but I couldn't do that to all of our wonderful crumblies. <laughs> So it's great, isn't it? Because we've got Karen. We've got another Karen in the kitchen tonight. Karen Davis. Karen yes, Davis. You. Yeah. So we've got. So you've had two. You've had a, a, a. You've had two Karens today. You've got me this morning, and you've got Karen Davis on at eight o'clock tonight. Do you know what she's doing, Tony? She's doing. Are they called gonks? Oh, the ones with the, the fuzzy Christmas hair. Gonks. Christmas yeah. gonks. Oh, that's going to be amazing. Because I had no idea what they were, and then oh, I was googling them, and gonks. I was like, oh my gosh, these are so cool. Gonks takes me back. We used to collect gonks when I was a, when I was a, uh, like probably a teenager. You collected gonks. Oh my god! Yeah. I decided I'm going to get gonks for everyone this year. Yeah, they, so fun. They had used to have like the the mad orange hair, lime green, purple. Oh, they were they were great. Love them. So there we go. That's been stirring round now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the 63 grams of flour straight into this mixture. Simon is on later today uh, with Karen Davies um, tonight, Anna, so don't worry, he's still about. You can have your Simon fix later. <laughs> just, I like the morning shift on a Monday. <laughs> Simon doesn't like morning shifts, full stop. No, he does not. <laughs> so as you can see, this has come nice and thick. Now you've put your flour into it, it's come nice and thick. But what you want to do is, for a couple of minutes, you just... You're just uh, paddling it against the sides of the uh, the saucepan, just so that the flour is cooking through. So you're not wanting it to stick to the pan, and we're just going to give it a bit of a. But they all remember gonks. Oh yeah. Maybe <laughs> Hargreaves, I remember that. And trolls. Yes. Marie had a huge collection of gonks as a kid. Yes. And the Nicky King. <laughs> And Kathy Eaton, she loved collecting them. <laughs> well, I've got somewhere, I, I've got a gonk pencil uh, pencil topper. And I don't know if it was in that, it might be on your desk or it might be in the drawer. Oh, I'm going to have to have a yeah. 
So there we go. So I'm just uh, oof, give your arms a give your arms a good workout. Tracy Cotton is asking, do we need to sift the flour? Well, mine. You know what? It wouldn't do you any harm to sift your flour because then any if you've got any uh, any bits of lumps, I already had mine sifted, but. Um, I don't want them at home, I must admit, but I do when I'm here, but uh, you can sift it if you want to. I have made them at home without sifting flour and they have turned out as, as, uh, as good. So that has been going up the side of the pan now, because this is a nice cast iron pan, so it is a, it's warm all the way around. So I've just been making sure that the flour has been just cooking through slightly. And everything is really, when you're doing this, it means that everything is really well mixed together. And we're just going to put this straight into the mixing bowl. And then I just need to leave it a couple of minutes, just so some of the heat will go off it. The mixing bowl. Oh, Jackie Adams, I had a deprived childhood. I never had any gonks. Oh, well, <laughs> you watch Karen Davis tonight, Jackie, and you can make yourself a gonk. There we go. So we're going to put that into there. So as you can see, the bowl, the, the pan is absolutely clean. There's nothing left in there. It's all... Oh, wrong camera. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's absolutely clean. There's nothing left in there because you've managed to cook it all and you've took it all around the side of the pans and it's really clean, that pan now. Put that onto a wire tray. So that is part of your shoe pastry that is in this bowl. Now I'm going to leave that just for a couple of minutes on the mixer stand and I'll bring over the eclairs for any people who were late joining us. <laughs> Maureen used to cut the hair on her, she had aspirations of being a hairdresser. <laughs> Did it work though Maureen? <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, these are the chocolate eclairs we're making today. We're, um, we're going to fill them with a gorgeous flavoured double cream. I'm going to flavour it with our salted caramel flavoured cream, uh, flavoured icing sugar, the same as I flavoured the chocolate eclairs and with a gorgeous chocolate um, topping on it, yum yum. So we have that and then these are the ones that I made earlier and this is what they'll turn out like and then they're just right now, they've been egg washed and they're just right now for filling with cream or with creme patissiere. And Michelle Quinn, um, gonks, if you Google them, they're like gnomes, and yes, they do have like a Simon beard. <laughs> um, so some people know them as gnomes, I knew them as gnomes until this morning, and yeah. I really wish I'd known they were called gonks before, because I feel like I've been deprived my 22 years of living, calling them gnomes instead of gonks. So they are the same thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put my piping bag. I'm not going to cut a hole out of it. I'm not even going to use a nozzle. I'm just going to put it on the side of my glass so I can handle it better. I want to get it right there so we can get all the batter into there. Now I want to show you, I want to prepare the tray. Now the tray, you want a piece of a tray and a piece of greaseproof paper. And the best thing, you can either use a spray just to wet the bottom of the tray or you could use a pastry brush. You just want a little bit of water on there because the water will help your shoe buns rise because of humidity. So I've just sprayed that there. So that tray is now ready to go. And that will go into an oven that's 160 degrees. I, I, I have got in the recipe on the website 180 degrees, but I don't know... I, I, this, the ovens I've got here, it tend, it, um, they came out a little bit too brown too quickly. So I've reduced the oven temp to 160 and that is for 20 minutes. And then you turn it down to 140 between 5 and 8 minutes. But don't open the oven door in that first 20 minutes. Uh, even when you've turned the oven down, just do them for a, a, another good 5 minutes and then the tiniest peak and it really is, it's, it's between another five and eight minutes that you want to cook them on the lower heat. But don't, if you open the oven door too early, your shoe paste will just go and just flatten. So this has been cooling nicely in my mixing bowl now. I've got the, um, the paddle on and I'm going to start adding this egg, this beaten egg, a little bit at a time. Now you won't probably have to use all of it, you only 
pouring enough egg into it to get a lovely piping consistency. You'll probably be left with about a tablespoon at the end, but we will see as we go along. So start it on a low speed and add the egg slowly. <laughs> Debbie Hargreaves wants you to repeat the um, shoe bombs flattening. She just goes, how did it go again, Karen? <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> and I know that from experience, that's how they go. <laughs> the word flatter than a pancake comes to mind. But you can see that in the bowl now. I'm just going to turn up a little bit. It's, I still need to add some more egg. So I've probably got about the just under a tablespoon of egg left in my bowl. I'm just going to turn this up. I want to make sure that all the egg is mixing into the shoe pastry. And Sue, so we'll go work for the oven again in a minute, don't worry. If you concentrate on the egg going in the shoe. Right, I've got that. So that is a lovely pouring it's a lovely consistency that you can just see it's just about to drip off so I know that's a piping consistency that I'm getting to a piping I'm getting that to a piping consistency so I will bring it back to the board to show you so I didn't use all the egg but you see the egg that's left over is great then you can use it to brush the tops of your eclairs before they go into the oven use it as an egg wash So you can see this now, that is a nice piping consistency and you'll see as I put it into this piping bag now, Scrape the bowl down. There we go, put that over there. Just want to make sure that that's all flattened down. Now don't make these too thin. If you make them too thin, they don't, um, they come out like a bit of a finger rather than, um, a bun. Well, rather than, yeah, than, than a nice eclair bun. So, if, I don't know if you can see, I'll go on the overhead now. That's the end of my piping bag there. I am going to cut about, it looks like just a, probably about an inch and a half. We can measure it. Off there. Measure it. Yep. About an inch and three quarters. Yeah, thereabouts. Yep. Yeah, because you want to have for doing it. If you was doing the shoe buns to do the uh, the the fresh cream shoe buns, you'd want to make the hole smaller. But I want to do this in. I want to pipe the fingers in one go, and I'm going to pipe six. So you see, you squeeze it, and you come out and down and then I'll just squeeze that up there Oh, Debbie Hargreaves says she had the fastest order she's ever had last week. She ordered on Friday and it arrived on Saturday. Fantastic service, sugar and crumbs. Thank you. We try. <laughs> so there you go. I've got my six. So if you wanted to, you could have made them smaller if you wanted. didn't want to waste that bit of shoe pastry there. So I've got my six there. I'm now going to get the little bit of egg white that I had left and I've got my brush there. So that's my bit of egg 
left this like I said there was probably about a tablespoon there and I'm just going to lightly remember don't go too heavy just lightly brush the top of each shoe bun That's brilliant. You always like to hear that. <laughs> Nikki King. I just love the way there is always a tape measure right now. Yep. I'm going to put these straight into the oven now. That could be Simon. <laughs> and I'm putting those on for 20 minutes. The timer has now gone on for 20 minutes. So for the oven, could you please repeat it again as in when do you, what temperature is it at and when do you turn it down for Sue Mary please? Right, it starts at 160 degrees. Now on the recipe on the website it does say 180. So it does depend on your oven. I found the ovens here uh, tend to be a little bit hotter. So I've turned mine down to 160 degrees. And then you leave that on for 20 minutes and then turn it down to 140 degrees for between five and eight minutes but you, when you when you look at don't undo the oven that first 20 minutes and definitely put them turn the oven down and leave it for another five minutes and then you can take a quick peek and you'll see that if they're a lovely golden brown and not but if they're a lovely color like this you've cracked it that's the color they're supposed to be as you can see that's where the egg wash has been so i've got them all a bit shiny on there but there's going to be chocolate covering that as well Honestly, Nikki Simon does have a lot to answer for. <laughs> <laughs> right, while those are in the oven, we'll make the creme patissiere. And for that, we put in, I'm doing half a portion of what's on the website. And actually, it's with the Russian sandwich, the creme patissiere, so I'm actually going to copy and paste it, and I'm going to do it as its very own um, recipe for the creme patissiere, because you can use it in a lot of things. So it's I'm using today... Because I only want half a portion, I'm using 250 mils of milk. And I'm going to bring that to the boil. I just, um... And this is where we separate the eggs. Oh, might as well go to that one. Hang on, I'm going to get another bowl out. I went between bowls there. I was very unsure then, wasn't I? And I went between bowls. Because I only want the egg yolk. Which, just bear with me a second. Egg yolk. There we go. I've got semi-skimmed, but you could use whole milk, you could use skim milk. I've done them with skim milk at home, I've done them with semi-skimmed here, I've also made them with I've made them with whole milk as well, so it's completely your preference of what you like to what milk you like to bake with or what milk you like to use at home. So remember what I said about the egg whites? If you wanted to, because you if you're making a full batch of crumpets this year, it takes four egg yolks, you'd have four egg whites left. You can make an uh, egg white sponge which is great, it's like the white sponge. Uh, remember, it still has a little bit of yellow in it because of your butter in there. But you can make yourself use the egg whites to make gorgeous sponges. So this is now... I want to bring this to the boil. So I'm just going to turn this up because I want to bring the milk to the boil. I'm just trying to think in this... Oh, Trisha and Neil, love these lives I do. Oh, I'm so glad. So I'm just going to show you the milk there like that. Just bear with me a second. There we go. We've got a bowl there. So what we can do now is I can show you these three things here 
Uh, so I've got my two egg yolks, I've got my 20 grams of corn flour, and I've got 50 grams of natural flavoured icing sugar. Now I've used velvet vanilla for this one, and I'm just going to mix them all together. And we're going to mix that down into a nice smooth paste. I'll keep my eye on the milk as well. So I want to just mix these down into a nice smooth paste. As I said, these recipes are on the website. They're in the website on the um, the full the full quantities. The creme patissier is under the Russian sandwich cake, and the uh, chocolate eclairs is under the fresh cream shoe buns that I made a few weeks ago but I will give them their own title as well on the website so you can find them for easy reference and they'll also go on the sugar and crumbs uh, the cake recipe mixing it up that's on Facebook as well they'll be going on there so as you can see that's a nice smooth paste that just came together instantly didn't it yes so you've got that that's all ready now I have also 20 grams of butter in this small dish which is what we need after we've sieved it so we need a bowl and a sieve <laughs> here's one made earlier <laughs> so debbie if you take a peek in the oven at your shoe buns before they're even ready it'll go <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> It's a good job we're all laughing, isn't it? <laughs> At least we are. <laughs> oh, no, here we are. We've got the laughing <laughs> Hope you're all enjoying this. <laughs> so my life tomorrow, I'm actually probably going to do, I'm going to doing it with whipping up. I'm going to be making pavlo over again that will probably do into a gorgeous eat and mess dessert for you. Yum. How nice will that be with our Stop baking fl nice things. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to start baking with liver and things like that because I just can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Debbie Hargreaves made coconut flavoured cupcakes and used marshmallow in the buttercream. Oh, lovely. Mm. Very nice. So this is coming to the bowl now. I don't want it to burn, but I just want it to come slightly to the bowl before I pour a little bit onto my um, eggy corn flour mixture. And then I can put that back into the bowl and carry on stirring, into the pan I should say, and carry on stirring. So this is coming up really nice now. Oh, Helen Williams, we always have a good laugh in your lives, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> And Jackie Adams seems excited. OMG, my fave dessert. Have to get that when it's on a menu. Which one? Which one's that? The, the Eaton Mess. Yeah, oh, I think. yeah. As oh, and Wayne James Moore says, "Yum, my favourite pav." Oh, brilliant! Well, what flavour do you want me to do, guys? Let us know. Let me know what flavour. Let me know what fruit you want. Yes, Janie, we do have the spatulas on our website. Not this Not one that I'm using. one. This one. But this one. <laughs> <laughs> the pink one. There's a pink and a purple. There is a pink and a purple, yes. Um, they will be on the Facebook Live wish list. Yeah, these ones, Carol's had these big gingerbread man ones in for years. I think she said she got them from probably um, like Dunelmo, one of those are called the craft shops that you go to so she's had them a long long time and even I've looked for them and I can't find them because <laughs> they are super aren't they and we are don't worry I am going to do the prize draws later in case any of you hadn't forgot <laughs> Carol's sorting all that out for me you've got requests for fruit tomorrow as well Karen yeah Brida says raspberries or nectarines Sue Mary says raspberry ripple Sheila says raspberry. I think raspberry's the winner here. Right, I think we'll do raspberry ripple, whipping it up, and I think we'll get some fresh raspberries, and we'll do a raspberry eaten mess dessert. Yum. How does that sound? That sounds great. 
So this is nearly at boiling point now. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to pour a little bit into my mixture. Just take the pan off the heat a moment while I stir all this in. straight back into the rest of the milk and that's going straight back onto the heat and I'm going to carry on now stirring this and you will see it will start to thicken really quickly so if Tony can get back to the pan yes, I can. and this is where you do carry on stirring it constantly because you don't want it to stick to the bottom of your pan it's the corn flour that will make it thicken up really quick as it starts coming to the boil. So you're just bringing it slightly, you bring it to the boil again, it will thicken up and then we will just carry on stirring around until I can get some nice big bubbles in it. I can feel that's going now. Oh, you and me both, Julianne. She says, always wondered how creme patissiere was made. It's one of those that it just seems so fancy, doesn't it? Yes. A creme pat. But... Looking at this, I feel like even I could make it. <laughs> you just make it so accessible, Karen. Well, you can. Everybody can make this. As you can see now, I don't know if you can see in the camera, it is starting to thicken up. So I'm just giving that a really good stir now. <laughs> Read around us. Good title for a film. Carry on stirring. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that's a lovely thick smooth mixture but I do want to just carry on giving it a stir until I can get those first bubbles in that tells me it's reached boiling point. Oh, Wayne's throwing in a wild card for tomorrow he says must have passion fruit on the pavlova. I don't think they're in season here. They'd be really hard to come by. Yeah you're, you're great where you live Wayne. You've got access to access to all those gorgeous tropical fruits. I think here in good old Morrison's we're on we're on raspberries girls. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki King's adding on to uh, Breeders film title says or oh, carry on faffing. Carry on faffing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> carry on winging it. Yes, <laughs> Sugar and Crumbs <laughs> Carry On series. Right, as you can see now, don't you can see that, um, just don't want to leave it too. There's some bubbles starting to come in that now, some nice bubbles as though it's reached, reached boiling point now. It's lovely and smooth. All those lumps that were there before have all gone. Come on, I didn't see, I don't want you to burn on the bottom of the pan. Jamie Stott says, long ago we used to use custard powder for our creme patissiere a la Olden. Right, there we go, I've got bubbles. So that now is going to go straight into the sieve. So you do it till you see those first couple of big bubbles start popping in your mixture. And you've carried on stirring it so you've got rid of all the lumps out of it. There's a, it's a, just a lovely smooth mixture now. Put that to one side. And I'm just going to just put this through the sieve. Just to make sure that if anything had got through, any lumpy bit had got through, it's all going to go through and it's going to be lovely and creamy. So look at that, that's all gone through fine. And you turn the sieve upside down and take it off the back. So when I made the um, I made the full recipe, that was enough to cover the inside of um, if you wanted to do it a three-layer Russian sandwich. And this is just enough now to pipe into some chocolate eclairs. So I've got that. I've turned the heat off there because it's very warm in here. So what you do now is you've got your 20 grams 
of butter in there. I've just got the three little cubes there. That just goes straight into the creme pet. And we're just going to stir that round now until the butter has completely melted. Good arm exercises. It is, and these small, these small spatulas, these ones here are absolutely excellent for doing little jobs because it's going up the side of the bowl, it's getting everything mixed in. I know there's nothing left behind, is there? No. So there we go. So look at that now. That is absolutely smooth, beautiful. I would leave that to go cool now before I can put it in the fridge because it's best to make it a couple of hours before you need to use it because it needs to cool down, then go in the fridge for a couple of hours. So that is going to be leave on one side there. Once it's gone a little bit cooler, I'm just going to put a piece of um, greaseproof paper over it, one of my six inch circles over it and I'll get the one out of the fridge now that I made earlier. So this is one I made earlier, and look at that. And all you do for that is you just take it out of the fridge and give it a mix around and it will go piping consistency again. And that now is beautiful for going on in between your sandwich of your cakes or for going, um, for going in your chocolate meringues. So I'll be piping that in in a bit, so look at that. So that's all you do, when you take it out of the fridge because it's set nice, you just give it a good stir around so you make it nice and creamy again, but it's still a set consistency, but as you can see the difference, so you've got a runny one there, and you've got the settish one there. Let's bring these over. <laughs> So I've got my 1M, which I'm putting into my piping bag. That must be something because the creme pat I've got, we don't add the double cream, we just add a little bit of butter at the end. And Sarah Jane Eldon is asking, is it the same as making custard? Um, no, because this has got the flavour in as well. So once you add once you add icing sugar and um, a flavour to um, this mix, that's when it comes. That's when it becomes creme pâtissière. Otherwise, it is just um, it's not good. It doesn't set like custard. There was a I, re I read it. I'll have to. <laughs> you know when your your mind's gone blank on the, when I read it up, it's because I've added I've added van, I've added um, velvet vanilla icing sugar in there, and if you add velvet vanilla, if you add vanilla and icing sugar to the mix, it then becomes like a confectioner's cream because you've added those two ingredients. And with using the velvet vanilla icing sugar, which in this one I have, I've made it into the creme pâtissière. So I'm just going to cut one. We're going to do a, a couple of different methods here. So I'll just get a really sharp serrated knife so that I can get into that. Oops. So we've got that one like that. And then let's try an injection method. That I requested. <laughs> I just want to see if it works. Well, it would be good, wouldn't it, to see if it works. 
So I'm just going to use a little, use a little, little, little palette knife there. I'm going to put the tube in. And it's easy to get you to test than myself, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> it works, but you use a lot more, a lot more, a lot more creme pat if you want a nice full one. So that's gone. That is going. It's a nice full one. It's going all the way down there. So that's got a nice lot in. Yum. So it does work. It does, but I do prefer the no, but you can control the amount, yeah. can't you? Yes. The other way. Ah, Nikki Weller says, I would always add double cream to creme pat to lighten it, but I believe it's called creme diplomat. Oh. You've made a posher one. I'm just going to turn my oven down now. Am I right in thinking you are using the 1M nozzle as I well? I am, yes. So Tracy, it's the 1M nozzle. And then we are going to get our mixing bowl with our beater. do there we go and then I've got a 300 ml of double cream which I'm going to put into the bowl there we go it's what happens when you work backwards isn't it it is and I'm going to put in a good tablespoon full of salted caramel flavoured icing sugar. Just start that off so it's all mixed around, then we'll get it mixed a bit more. Uh, Joe Griffin, hi yes. He says, it looks nice when you see the filling. <laughs> they do though, don't they? No, too bad, I agree with that. I just wanted to see if it works. <laughs> yeah. Then you can have fancy packs, get their fancy little piping. Do all sorts. Right, I might have just, oh, just bear with me a second. I might have just overbeat that a little bit, but I've saved a little bit of cream, which I'm just going to scrape out. That's a clean one. This is what you can do. You just, I have got some more in the fridge. A little bit of cream, just to bring it back. I don't, I don't want to um, waste my cream, so I have got a little bit of cream here. There you go. Just a, just a tablespoonful. There you go, that's what you cream back lovely. Just have a look. Just give it a quick stir around because I just might use a little bit more. Yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit more because I think I'll over. Beat it. It's a day then. Here we go. Let's see if that works. That's better. Just want it to mix in lightly. Beautiful. you know tone it mm. you know when something just doesn't look could you pass me another bowl please my darling yes i can mommy make sure it's all right for you lot on there I don't need that I don't know that cream just doesn't look right and you know when cream doesn't look right so just making sure I've got my 300 mils going in there just add 
some of this one. And there we go. Start again. Don't, don't, don't. We need it right. We do need it we right. We need it right. And this kitchen is ever so warm, so I'm not too sure about that cream. That's all. I'm just going to set it off, mix it a little bit now. because I measured out the uh, double cream into the bowl and I added some single cream as I didn't have any more double cream and it just took a little while to beat up but I've got there and it, it was only 50 mils of um, single cream but it is still mixed up together. There we go. So I've got a lovely... Yeah, Helen Williams says the other cream waste up way too fast. It did. It was, t it was too fast and I don't know... Um, Come on, get in there. You know you want to. And this kitchen now has gone like an oven. I am so hot in here, it's unbelievable. I know, it's like we're in Australia. <laughs> you know what I didn't do? Because I got panicked with the cream. Put your nozzle in. No, no, no. But do you know what you do then, then? You just get another bag, don't you? You just get a bag and you just put the nozzle in there. Slide that down to the bottom. 
snip. There we go, put that over there. Don't panic, just get another bag out and and start again. So I'll clean my knife off there. Just cut very gently into the shoe bun. And then we're just going to Scrape the cream down. I don't know which flavour I'm more excited for. <laughs> the creme pat or our um, salted caramel and ice and sugar, I know. Right, so I've got them like that. So what I've got now is I've got this. It's just started to go a little bit hard now. I'm just gonna put that in the microwave just for about 10 seconds because that's it's nice but it's just a little bit oh, it might actually no we'll just stir it round a bit so all this chocolate is please remind everyone again it's just some calibo chocolate that was melted down and then a little knob of butter put in probably about 20 grams and I've got a nice consistency there so then I can spread this gorgeous Chocolate topping. And she's taken it off screen. Sorry guys. Oh sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll come over here. I'm sorry about that. Let me come onto the pink board. Sorry about that. I was just, uh, I can call that my practice one that I was doing to make sure I was doing it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we believe you. So you see, it's got that nice consistency. You can get a really good coat on it. Don't matter, there's a little bit of cream on there. You just cover it up with more chocolate. More chocolate. Oh, don't worry, Alma. The ones in the oven are out. I do prefer, as Doe says, I do prefer them split with the uh, the cream coming out the side or the creme patissier. Yeah, I don't I, I don't like them sealed like this. Personally, some people might like to do it like that when they bite into it. You get a big mouthful of fresh cream or creme pet. Here we go. Ooh, Sheila Pet Pet. I don't know how you say your surname, I'm so sorry. Sheila says, <laughs> looks so delicious, could just eat one, and so does Valerie. They look so good. <laughs> right, I'm going to... Um, these are still a bit warm. They actually were a bit big. I think what I did there, I will show you these. I added probably a little tiny bit too much egg to it. And that's all it takes is just a little bit too much egg. It was a more, it was a, a softer piping consistency, but they still are great. They may be a bit flat, but when they cool down and you cut into them, you just fill them with the cream and it brings the shape back. It brings them back beautifully. But they're a bit too hot to cut into at the moment. They are a little bit too warm. Is that that tray? It's really soft. And Sandra. Malcolmson says droolishness is the only word I can think of when looking at these. <laughs> well, the test test has just come in. Chief Chief Tester, boss lady, has come in to try them. <laughs> I'm going to 
surprises, actually. Brilliant. Oh, that's great, Carol. That's so, you see, I told you I hadn't forgot about your prizes, and okay. Carol was in the middle of doing them all for us. Are they ready? So, we're over to you, Carol. Yeah, sorry. Do you want to come Are into you? Ready? You? I'm ready. Do you want to come here and you can talk to her? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> She's got a bra on, ladies. Don't worry. Oh, I've got the bra on. <laughs> <You've> got your... <laughs> I have got my bra on. <laughs> She thought she was in the gym jams, just in case you thought she was in the gym jams. Yeah, no, no, no. Right, okay then. So, Friday the 23rd of October. It took me a little while, I got confused. So, uh, I scrolled up the page, it took me ages. Anyhow, Karen, vegan baking, ginger creams. So, the winner for a £25 voucher is Vanessa Craft. So, congratulations, Vanessa. So, uh, well done to her. So, remember, for you to claim your prizes, you need to email the office, which is info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.co.uk. We do not message you. Do you remember when we had all that spammer business? So, I don't message anybody. I tell you, you contact our website. Go to our contact page and contact there. Or you can email us, info dot sugar and crumbs at icloud.com so vanessa craft 23rd of october for the ginger creams vegan bacon you've won it i've done it again <laughs> <laughs> uh, a 25 pound voucher so monday karen was in she was making her parking so that was julie thomas well so congratulations done. julie thomas um, I think Vanessa has won once before a long time, but I didn't know whether Julie Thomas has, actually. The name doesn't ring a bell at the moment no. in okay. this last lot of prizes. Now, I don't know how I'm going to say this word, but on, on uh, uh, the 26th, I'm only 26th, so it's Tuesday. No, it's my Monday Macron night, your, class. Your Macron class. My Macrons. Francis, and then it's spelled M-W-E-S-I-G-E. I have no idea. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Masweegee or something, Masweegee. <laughs> Masweegee. <laughs> I, do a, I do see a name. Yeah. Oh, I do. So, congratulations. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and then on the 27, Karen, Coconut Tipsy Ice. That's Lindsay Pearson. I know that lady as well. So, Lindsay Pearson, congratulations. Then on the 28th, Karen, I tell you, like a star, you last week, weren't you? You were baking for yeah, fun. Yeah, not kidding. So, Karen, free hands last week, Helen Williams. So well the done. Free hands on the 28th, so no Helen. And then the last one was the Poppy Reef Cake. So, well done, uh, well done all of you. They've got lots of likes and shares on there. And that was Pat Doherty. Well I think that's done. how you say your name. So, we are bang up to speed. Absolutely. Because there was no class on Friday. There wasn't. So, we start again on Monday. So, sorry if you didn't read them out on Friday, but we was doing a class with Doe Griffin. And I must say, it was a great class. Didn't oh, she it was do well? superb. She really did well. And you've got plenty of time to join on for part two, where she's going to do those gorgeous... Um, toppers uh, uh, no i'm going to show them that they're here uh, we're doing some we're doing, your buns while you're at it. we're doing nordic <laughs> we're doing some we're doing some nordic uh christmas characters i'll just show you a couple of nordic ones i'll show you a couple of these ones that we're doing so, so doe said she'd do some nordic santas yeah pass this one of your things while you're doing that <laughs> i'll take the baby one there you go And then look at these. Doe has said she's going to put some of these on the class because there's only so many, as she said, there's only so many Nordic Santas you can make. I like that one with the, um, the cutout in the middle. Oh, it's lovely, isn't mm. it? And then look at these. How pretty are these? And as Doe said, these will make great uh, Christmas tree decorations. Mm. Yeah, they'll make, they'll, they'll make great Christmas tree decorations, but they'll, they'll also be fit on a four-inch top of a cake. Mm. So they'll actually make gorgeous cake toppers as well, if you wanted to. And she said she'd do the robins in that next class. That's the robin. And she says she's going to no, do... Uh, yes, robins. yes, she says she's got doing these ones as well. Yeah. So um, So she's doing different Santas, but uh, you're going further and further off. I'm just showing, just showing, I'm, I'm there, there I am. <laughs> I'm just showing you these lovely robins here. Look at those. How cute do they look? Yeah, so that was a great class on Friday. All the classes are great. If you haven't signed up, get signed up. Some of the classes that you should think about is, you should certainly think about the Cake Illusionist Christmas dinner class. Oh, my gosh. You've got to do that one. Seriously. 
Yes. Go and have a look at that one. It's £30. You will all love it. Can you imagine showing your family a certainly a different type of Christmas cake? And it comes out and it looks like a Christmas turkey with all the vegetables and sprouts and everything. It will be amazing. And you know what? Everybody else would just be amazed. Something different. That's definitely a class I'd push forward for that one. Um, so I'm just going to read through the winners again, just in case you've missed them. So Friday, the 23rd, Vegan Baking. Get it right, baking. Baking. <laughs> Vanessa Craft, ginger creams. Congratulations so, to Vanessa Craft. Monday the 26th, parking. Karen was making parking for bonfire night. That was Julie Thomas. Congratulations. Monday night, I did those Christmas macarons as per usual. I came in and winged it, and they actually came out all right. So I was well chuffed with myself. And the lady is called Frances, and I've no idea how to pronounce her surname, but it's spelled M W E S I G. And it might be an IE or just an E on the end. I can't remember. IGE. Because she said, yay, thank you, and well done, Karen, for pronouncing my name. Oh, did you say that? How did you say it? Let me look again and I'll tell you. <laughs> Miss Ouija. <laughs> you guessed that one. You properly winged that one, didn't you? <laughs> no, I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then the 27 was Lindsay Pearson. 28 was Helen Williams. And the 29th for the Poppy Reef was Pat Doherty. So there's a few ladies there I know and a few ladies I don't know, yeah. actually. In fact, there's only one lady I don't know, so Julie Thomas. Congratulations yeah. to all you winners. Yes, well absolutely. done. And thank you so much for joining me. And as I said, you've had one Karen this morning and you've got another Karen tonight. Yeah. No, it's not me. It's our Karen Davis is back in the kitchen. Yes. And as Tony said, she's making gonks. Tony didn't know what one was. Tony didn't know what a gonk was. I said was. to her this morning, she said she's making a gonk. She said, what's one of that? It's a gonk. So I tried to explain it to her. So yeah. Google it. She went, oh my God. Yeah. And we all, all our ladies, we all know gonks because Mo said she used to collect gonks and give them haircuts. <laughs> 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 so join Karen tonight at 8 o'clock uh, Karen will be on comments and it'll be Simon on the uh, cameras and then I'm back tomorrow at 11.30 and by popular request I'm going to do the Raspberry Ripple Pavlova eating mess just yeah, for you yeah. Wayne yeah. and all the other ladies who think it's your favourite dessert are you going to make the Pavlova and then smash it up or are you make it? Are you going to make one of your pretty Pavlovas yeah I'm going to do a couple yeah, you should. Do your pretty one with your pretty piping. I do the pretty one with the pretty piping, and then we'll make the other pavlova where I'll show you. If it comes out cracked out, your oven doesn't matter. Yeah. You're just going to break it up for an eating mess yeah. anyway. Yeah. So we'll, right. I'll show you how to do that tomorrow. So yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. And I'll, Carol will see you tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Cheerio. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. Like and share. Like and share. Not into our groups. <laughs>